welcome to our second installment in a study series of Jesus Christ's uh, seven statements on the cross, otherwise known as the seven last words of Jesus on the cross, seven sayings on the cross. And uh, it's taken in Luke chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. Luke 23, 39 to 43. Uh, allow me to read this. And one of the criminals who hang there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said. Since you are under the sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Verse 43, Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, or verily I say to you, today you will be with me. In paradise. Manalangin po muna tayo. Maraming salamat Panginoon sa aming prayer time. Although uh, nagkaroon po ng technical difficulty in our instrument uh, uh, para sa aming awitan. But Panginoon, harit po kami magpapatuloy sa pag-aaral ng salita. Patawarin mo kami sa aming kasalanan sa isip salita at sa gawa. And open our hearts and mind to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. May we be close to you. Katulad na nangyari sa thief on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that in Jesus' time, these criminals are people who do serious crimes? Like, mamamatay tao na rin sila. They, they do evil deeds. Uh, they are called sometimes bandits or highwaymen. Uh, that's why they are called thieves or robbers who strip uh, or rob people of their belonging while they are traveling at night. And look, earlier in his record, both of these thieves or both of these criminals initially mocks and blasphemed Jesus. However, something happened between that, that uh, starting time from hurling insults and mockery. And then within that six hour period, something miraculous happened. And uh, the gospel writers never told us about the exchange of conversation between Jesus Christ and the two thieves on the cross. But I think both of them heard the word from Jesus Christ, the good news of salvation, about eternal life, about God the Father, about the, the coming kingdom. Evidently, one criminal rejected Jesus and his words. The other criminal, the other thief, embraced Jesus and his word. That's why he said, he acknowledged, we are punished justly for what we are, what we deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. That was, that was the repentant criminal. That was the repentant thief declaration. And, and he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And we know the rest. This this repentant criminal, when he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom, what kind of statement is that? Isn't it It's a plea? It's, it's a plea for God's mercy. Panalangin na may pagmamakaawa, alalahanin mo ako, Panginoon, pag dumating ka na sa iyong kaharian. What was the physical condition of the criminal? Now, our imagination will, will, will say that under, under the Roman uh, uh, execution and torment, they were under excruciating pain and, and they are dying. Maybe that particular uh, day or days, right? But this criminal is a condemned man. But this condemned man, while hanging on the cross, look at, the Jesus, look at Jesus Christ on the center and see another type of man, not a criminal, Although he's dying, he believes that Jesus was the Messiah himself. Somehow this repentant criminal understand that Jesus is not an imposter. Jesus is not a fake news. Jesus is the good news, the real news. He is the real deal. And that's why he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now the question is, 
how can this quality of faith coming from a criminal who probably wasn't able to attend a worship service, enter the church, or did something good? And that's why he was punished for his crime. But how can this quality of faith at such a dark time of suffering and dying believes in Jesus? Did this thief, did this criminal confess his sins? Absolutely. Look at his confession. We are punished justly for we are getting what we deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. That's one. And notice his acknowledgement of his sinful condition. We are punished for we are getting what we deserve, sinful condition. But he saw Jesus as his solution. Did he repent of his sin? I think he did. His repentance and hope prompted him to plead for God's mercy. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. This repentant criminal had publicly expressed, openly expressed his faith in the face of other criminals on the other side. Recognizing Jesus for who he was, the promised Messiah, the soon coming king. Sana tayo ganun din po mga kaibigan, mga kapatid. Now we need to publicly express our faith in Jesus. We need not to hide from anyone that we, we experience being born again, being born of water and of the Spirit, that we are true follower of Christ. And interestingly enough, how did Jesus Christ respond to this repentant criminal? He prefaced it with a prefix statement, I tell you the truth. In the King James Version, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Many scholars believe that every time Jesus uses the prefix phrase, Verily, verily, I say unto you, it means you have to listen with 100% attention. 76 times in the New Testament, Jesus used that phrase. And interestingly enough, no one from the apostles nor other Bible characters have mentioned that prefix phrase, truly, truly, I say unto you, or verily, verily, I say unto you. Why? Because Jesus is affirming that what he is about to say needs 100% attention and understanding. In our current vernacular, in our current time, it was Jesus' way of saying, guys, guys, listen up. Listen up to what I am about to say. This is really very important. And you need to listen 100%. As Jesus was hanging on the cross, paying for the penalty of our sins, imagine that. Jesus made prayers. Not only he made prayers, he made a promise to a dying, repentant sinner. By God's grace, that promise given was a promise kept. And I believe that that thief's sin were washed away, and his death, that day was an entrance to the paradise that Jesus Christ promised. You know what? The, the promise of forgiveness, the promise of, of eternal life is not only for the thief on the cross. It's for everyone. That's why, he sa the, the, that's why Jesus Christ says in, in John 3, 16, For God so loved the people of the world that he gave his only Son. That whoever believes in Jesus will not perish but have everlasting life. That was a promise. So Jesus answered the thief's request by granting his prayer with a promise. Today you will be with me in paradise. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not the day after. Today while still hanging on the cross. What kind of promise is that? It's an assurance at its best. The guy who promised was still hanging on the cross, but because of faith of this repentant sinner, he embraced Jesus. What a wonderful promise Jesus gave to this believing thief. Because this believing thief expressed his faith and petition. Not only a promise was given, but the presence with Christ in paradise was assured. You know, the word paradise... The, the, the word paradise was taken, 
was a transliteration of the Greek word paradiso, which comes from the old Persian word paradisa, meaning enclosure, meaning garden. In the Greek Septuagint translation of the Old Testament, that paradiso was used in Genesis chapter 2. Why? Because Judaism in Jesus' day equated paradise with New Jerusalem. And Judaism saw it as the present abode of the souls of the depart departed patriarchs or the elect or the righteous. You know, in the New Testament, interestingly enough, the word paradise was used three times. One, over there in Luke 23, 43, today you will be with me in paradise. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3 and 4, And I know this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. But the man... But, but God knows was caught up to paradise. He heard inexpressible things that the things man is not permitted to tell. 2 Corinthians 12, 3 and 4. Finally, the other usage was in Revelations 2, 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcome, I will give him the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. You know, in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 3 and 4, the Apostle Paul equate the third heaven with paradise. And I think I do believe this with my whole heart. We can identify paradise with heaven. Jesus is promising this believing thief that he will be with Jesus in heaven today, not the day after. I've alluded a, a while ago that both of the sti these criminals initially mocked and blasphemed Jesus, as did many of those Jewish religious leaders, spectators, and angry mob. One of the thief, the repentant thief, responded in faith after listening to Jesus, after watching Jesus pray, and communicated with the Heavenly Father after talking with, with them. The other thief rejected, did not respond in faith. And you know what? All people, I believe, from the lesson we get from that, all people will hear the gospel. Unfortunately, some people will reject outrightly. And then they will ignore Jesus, while others will embrace it. Now, the question being is, were you included? To those people who embrace the offer of salvation? Or you're the other kind of thief that outrightly reject instead mocking and hurling Jesus? Now, who is this unrepentant thief? How can we put a label to this guy? This unrepentant thief rejected Jesus' offer of salvation. While being tortured on the cross, this unrepentant thief literally joined the other torturers insulting Jesus. And the thief most likely did this so that he wanted his torturers to think that he was just like them. Joining them mocking Jesus in Matthew 27 verse 44. Not only this unrepentant thief next to, next to Jesus heard what Jesus say about the good news of the gospel, the love of God, and the coming kingdom, he witnessed the other thieves' declaration and confession of faith in Jesus that repented. He saw the physical darkness. He heard the testimony of Jesus, the prayers of Jesus. When he prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Question, what kept the unrepentant thief from receiving the free gift offered by Jesus. Can you guess? The word is pride. Pride goes before destruction. His pride and his stubbornness kept him from submitting himself to Jesus, the only one who could save his soul from hellfire. Now, here is a reflection as we close. Today, when you hear God's voice, instruction number one is do not, do not let your pride and stubbornness keep you from acknowledging, embracing, 
Jesus. Do not ignore Jesus. Do not reject Jesus. The Apostle Paul reminded us that there will be a judgment time that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What can we learn from these criminals on the cross, particularly the repentant criminal? Yung pong nagsising masamang tao. Number one, it just tells us that all of us are sinners and needed Jesus as our Savior. Ikaw at ako, makasalanan sa isip, sa salita, at sa gawa. Kailangan natin ng tagapagligtas. Hindi, hindi natin kailangan yung relihiyon. Hindi natin kailangan yung, yung institusyon. Ang kailangan natin si Jesus Christ po. And number two, no matter how bad we are, and no matter what our co-workers, our friends think of us, it is never too late to repent. It is never too late to repent of our sins and accept the free gift of salvation. Sabi po ni Apostle Paul, By grace we are saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. No amount of money can buy our way to heaven. No amount of good works can buy our way to heaven. Imagine that thief on the cross. As soon as he realized his sinfulness, as soon as he recognized that Jesus was the sinless Son of God who died on the cross for our sins, he confessed his sin, he embraced Jesus by publicly declaring, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. What is that? That is a plea for mercy, embracing salvation. Within six hours, that thief on the cross entered heaven's glory. Did he attend the church? No. Was he a member of a formalized institution? No. Did he go to school? Did he do good work? Did he give any offering? None of those. Why? Because none of those will buy our entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Faith and promise. What an encouragement that we can get that, number one, we are all sinners and in need of Jesus as our Savior. It is num Number two, it is never too late to repent of our sin and accept the free gift of salvation. And number three, it is never too late to proclaim the good news of the gospel to your friend, to your loved one, especially in this time of global pandemic, that people need the Lord. Yes, we need the vaccine, but the vaccine will only heal physically, but the eternal soul will still face separation, will still face spiritual death. While we are looking for vaccine to physically heal us and protect us, what about our spiritual soul? If someone will, will to ask you, if you die right now and you face God and God will ask you, why should I let you into my kingdom? What would you say? Maybe you will say, oh, I'm a member of this church. I, I, I give my tithes and offering. I do good works. Did the thief on the cross did that? None. A personal Genuine relationship with Jesus Christ saved him. Because Jesus, even at the last hour of his life, never stopped witnessing, never stopped telling about the love of God, his mission of bringing eternal life. Because only Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can go to heaven except through him. Imagine this. Because the, the, the father loves the son, he knows that the son will be on the cross, dying for our sins. But he provided the son with a strange companion, and we named him a robber, a criminal, condemned. So this is the strange companion on the cross, a robber turned believer, a condemned man became redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And a criminal, an earthly criminal, became 
a heavenly citizen at that particular moment in time. Can you see the salvation? Not, not a centavo, not, not a membership, not good works, because that criminal never did any good work. At one point, Jesus' disciple exhibited little faith, but occasionally Jesus encounters someone with great faith. Namely, in Luke 7, a Roman centurion, a Gentile, tells him that he doesn't need to be physically coming to, to heal his servant because all he had to do was to speak the word and he, and he has the authority to accomplish what it is. Jesus is amazed at this man according to Luke 7, 9. And he tells, I tell you, I have not found such a great faith in Israel such as this. To close this, mga kaibigan, mga kapatid. That thief on the cross was a repentant thief, a repentant criminal. And truly, the father provided the son with his strange companion during his last hours on the cross while paying for our sins, you and me. A robber turned believer, a condemned became redeemed, and an earthly criminal turned a heavenly citizen. What a wonderful deal. And so my prayer for you is to look within and reflect. Kung ako ba yung isa doon sa, sa pinako sa krus katabi ni Jesus, ako ba'y magsisisi ng aking kasalanan at pananampalatayaan ako sa si Jesus, o magiging katulad ako ng isa na patuloy pa rin siyang nagmamaka at nag-girl kay Jesus until His last breath. And sorry to tell you that hell is real, but hell was not prepared for people. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. But people who goes to hell because they decided like that unrepentant thief, he wants to go to hell by rejecting the offer of Jesus. Now, we are in a global pandemic. We have a lot of time to read the Bible, to communicate with God, to ask questions, so that if you have any questions re regarding our study tonight, you can message me. And, and we can talk about it just like this, interact.